Well, hey folks, Brad and Eddie here. Coming back at you with a new multi-part series hunting a new fabled treasure. In December of 2021, we published the finale of our last series, Finding the Vault of the Grau. It was an epic search across three majestic mountains, each with their own mythology, history, and dangers. In case you haven't caught all eight episodes, we're not gonna spoil that for you here. But what we will say is that the treasure at the center of this new series, although not as ingrained in Vermont folklore as de Grau was, it's based much less on myth and legend. Before we start telling the stories of this new treasure, we have one small important preface for this new series. Filming the Vault of de Grau took way too long. It took two years to complete. So for this new series, we've given ourselves five days to film the series and hopefully find the treasure. We've taken a whole week off from work. We drove down to Bennington County where these stories supposedly take place. And rented this Airbnb for the next four nights. We set up this temporary filming studio in one of the rooms. All right, Eddie, whose room are we setting up the studio in? I guess mine. <laughs> and we are determined to not go home empty handed this time. Can we do it? We're gonna find out. So now, without further ado, the stories behind the Grave of Gold. A whole year ago, we were searching through old newspapers to find any stories that had anything to do with de Grau, and we accidentally stumbled upon a story of a new treasure. August 4th, 1903, North Adams Transcript. Interesting camping sites, relics of former activity in wilds near Lake Casino. A camping party returned Saturday from a few days stay at Mr. Hill's camp at Lake Casino in the southern Vermont woods. The camp is in a very wild country where bear tracks are common and signs of civilization entirely lacking. There is in this region an interesting spot, which was once the site of an old time country tavern, such as were in vogue in the days of the stagecoach. There is also an interesting legend of the man who kept the tavern, Oliver Perry, who died in 1820. He was a man who was not entirely above suspicion, and there came to be a belief that now and then a traveler who carried money in considerable quantity found the end of his journey at this house. Before Perry died, he selected the site for his burial, and his wish was complied with, the grave being on the little farm above mentioned. Sometime after his death, some venturesome spirits heard the stories of his alleged robberies, came to the conclusion that his burial place was possibly near the spot where he might have buried his ill-gotten treasure, and they decided to investigate. As a result, the grave was open, but the money was not found. Thinking the kettles of gold might be nearby, they excavated for several feet in all directions, making a large opening in the ground, which they did not take the trouble to fill. And in one end of the hollow is the headstone which had been erected at the head of the grave. Mr. Oliver Perry died 21st December AD 1820 in the 51st year of his age. When we first heard this story, we thought it was amazing. Yeah, 200 years ago, a tavern owner in the mountains of Vermont was robbing or possibly murdering patrons and hiding it in his grave. And then somebody heard this story and believed it enough to actually dig up a body. It's an amazing story, but there's really no treasure there for us to find right now. Yeah, if there ever was gold in Perry's grave, it's really not there now. And it's not really new series material. At least that's what we thought. Yeah, we found a second newspaper article written over a year later. The Bennington Evening Banner, November 12th. 1904. The famous Perry Place. Treasure buried there. Some months ago, an article appeared in the North Adams Herald purporting to be a description of a trip to this once famous old hostelry in Reedsboro known as the Perry Place, in which the writer tells what he justly calls a weird tale of brigands, ghosts, and ghouls, which the people on this side of the mountain resent. The writer goes on to describe Perry as little less than a human tiger, lying in his lair, awaiting his prey that he might kill and rob, that he died deserted by friends. Dying, he requested to be buried on a certain knoll, that his evil spirit might guard the ill-gotten spoils buried there before. To me, 
it reads like a pipe dream. As you can probably tell by the mocking tone, the second author seems to be quite upset with the first author. Yeah, and I think that it's worth pointing out that these two authors are actually cousins. They are both grandchildren of the same gentleman that purchased the tavern after Perry died. They've both probably been to the tavern. Yeah, they both probably saw the open grave in person and heard stories firsthand from the grandfather about Perry. Why their stories would be so different, it's hard to say, but he goes on. I would have passed this article on were it not for the implied slander on my ancestor and an almost certain slander on Mr. Perry. Of course, there is no one living that has any personal knowledge of Mr. Perry, who died in 1820. There are, however, many people in this vicinity whose fathers knew him and all spoke of him with respect. A few years ago, a party of Williams students, possibly having heard the buried treasure story, went up there and dug a hole where Perry was buried. This is the hole that the party from North Adams saw, if they even saw a hole. So at this point, it seems like this is a dead end. There's no treasure, but then he changes his story. Buried treasure? Yes, there is treasure buried on the Perry place, and I know just where. It is not yellow sand, mica, or iron pyrite such as the rainbow chasers are digging all over the state, but good, hard coin of the realm and buried by the hand of man. And I propose, with the editor's permission, to tell the readers of this paper just where it lies before the snow leaves the ground in the spring. Treasure hunt officially back on. There is treasure at Perry's Tavern. All we have to do is find this third newspaper article. That's it. So we went back to the website that we use to look at old newspapers, searched for it, and unfortunately, it's not there. Now the records for small towns in Vermont are not totally complete on this website, but it's also possible that this guy just never followed up. Could be a bit of a bluff or a ruse. So I made a call to a library down here in Bennington County, asked if they had a complete record of the Bennington banner, and they said yes. So we took this story and put it on the back burner. Again, this happened over a year ago while we were working on DeGrau. We can't stop thinking about the story. Yeah, the alleged murders, treasure buried in a grave, just the story alone would make an amazing video or even series of videos exploring the ruins of the tavern, seeing the grave. Here we are in Bennington, the next four and a half days, we're just gonna go for it. Which brings us to the events that happened earlier today, which I can only describe as a wild mix of coincidence and, and fate. So we got here to the Airbnb early afternoon and we went directly to the library. And I want to apologize for the footage you're about to see because a lot of it is out of focus and shaky, but I feel like it's important to include it all. Hi. Hello. Um, we have a little YouTube channel and we're filming a series uh, about some local history that happened here in Bennington a long time ago. We were wondering if we could film you and maybe film ourselves doing some research in here. Yeah, sure. Here we are. Here we are with our new friend, Dewey, who's going to show us around the library and tell us where we should look. So local history is to my right. And if you're looking for newspaper archives, they're over here on our computers. You guys don't have the microfilm scrolling? So ever since a year ago when we called the library, Eddie has been talking nonstop about using <laughs> these microfilm machines. You see them in all the old movies, the big wheel, and you, you know. But unfortunately when we got there, Dewey had said that they had just gotten rid of them and transferred over to digital on the computers. Sorry. <sighs> Eddie was really hoping we would have some, some microfilm. That, that was my expectation, I, I don't know. <laughs> it would have been so cinematic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eddie and I are going to split up. I'm going to go check out the newspaper archives on the computer for that third newspaper article, and Eddie is going to go rifling through the local history books. Let's see what we can find. Fan out. <laughs> so I sat down at the computers and started sifting through the newspapers from the winter of 1905 and 1906, and unfortunately, that third newspaper article was not there. And I actually wanted to go back and get high-resolution photos of the first two articles, and they didn't have those either. So it was a total bust. Uh, uh, Dewey, it seems like some of these older newspapers from like the early 1900s are missing. They're not here. 
Yeah, when we got rid of the microfilm, some of the old newspapers were too damaged to digitize. Meanwhile, I'm browsing through the local history section trying to find anything making slight mention to Oliver Perry or the tavern. Admittedly, got a little sidetracked on some of the Bennington Triangle stuff. Forgotten tales from Vermont. Oh, boom. Glastonbury, Bennington Triangle. So if you're unaware, the Bennington Triangle is a name given to a large tract of wilderness in Bennington County where numerous unexplained disappearances have occurred. It's chock full of stories of aliens, Bigfoot. Eddie loves this I stuff. love that stuff. <laughs> love it. I was looking through local history books and I found this paperback pamphlet type thing called The Truth of the Triangle and scrolled through it real quick and there was a heading in there it said, Oliver Perry. I couldn't believe it. What? Yeah, somehow, while Eddie was looking through Bennington Triangle books, he found exactly what we were looking for. Fate. <laughs> <laughs> so the author goes on to talk about how disappearances in the Triangle have been happening since the beginning of time. And in the early 1800s, Perry, whose tavern is likely inside the Triangle, may have been falsely accused of murders to explain away these unexplained disappearances of his time. It's a pretty wild theory, but we think it's worthwhile talking to them to see if they know any more. So while Eddie was reading about aliens, I had abandoned the computers and I was just making small talk with Dewey about Vermont history and our love for these old locally written books about just daily life in Vermont. He was saying that every once in a while, a real treasure comes in through donation, and I was feeling a little bit desperate. He said it was fine. I started going through the donation box. Uh, what exactly are you looking for? We're really looking for kind of any indication of the location of this tavern that's up in the mountains. There's supposed to be treasure buried in a grave. No, you haven't heard that one? And I came across, fatefully, what I would describe as a handwritten leather-bound journal. Looks old. And on the first page, unfortunately the footage is a little bit blurry, it said, unidentified inns and taverns of the 19th century. And on the second page, also unfortunately a little bit blurry, it listed two in Bennington County with a couple notes on each. Unfortunately, neither mentioned Perry, but gold mine, right? So Eddie had his triangle book. I had the journal. We approached Dewey to take them out and this happened. Uh, so I think that we found a couple things that we would love to take out. I think we need a library card, right? That's how this still works. Can you stop filming, please? There's a guy who keeps dropping these off at the library. I don't know what it is. You can have it. Oh, well, that's good news, I guess. Okay. This, I actually know the owner of this journal, and I'm gonna have to give it back to them. Sorry. Uh, would you mind if we just took like a photocopy of the first few pages? No, I can't. I can't let you do that. I've gotta close up the library early, so I gotta ask you guys to leave. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank thank you. you. I don't know what happened. If we offended him, we essentially got kicked out of the library though, right? Yeah. But, you know, there is a silver lining. As soon as we got home, we emailed the author of Eddie's Triangle book. His email address was right on the cover, asking him if he had any more information about Perry or the tavern. And he responded almost immediately with a photo of the third newspaper article. And it only makes an already great story even better. The Bennington Evening Banner, January 28th, 1905 treasure is buried at the old Perry stand. Sometime since I promised your readers before the snow left the ground in the spring to tell the whereabouts of the hidden treasure of the Perry place. To give the story the semblance of truth which I fully believe it deserves, it will be necessary to go back to the second decade of the last century, when there came to the old hostelry a thorough specimen of the genus Hobo. He was tall and lank, stoop-shouldered with a repulsive face, unkempt and unshorn, without clothes enough to bolster a crutch, and these ragged and dirty. He told Perry that he wanted food and work. That he needed food and clothes was evident, 
and the big-hearted Perry would not allow a hungry dog to pass his house, so he took the tramp in and gave him food, clothes, and a bed. The next morning, he showed that he was really willing to work, and as work was plentiful with Perry, the Quandrum tramp became a fixture at the hotel. When Perry asked his name, he replied, Oh, just hot. You have a name, said Perry, in a tone that few people pretended to misunderstand. He straightened up his full six feet of frame, and looking Perry square in the eye, he replied, When I was home, gentlemen and ladies knew me as Harold Trelawney, but I am away from home now, and I am hot. He sought the friendship of none, and no one tried to force friendship upon him, but he was a faithful employee and remained with Perry until the latter died. In the meantime, he acquired a small piece of land, probably a gift from Perry, and built a cabin upon it. And after the death of Perry, Hod retired to his cabin and became a recluse. One cold winter's day, it was noticed that no smoke was coming from Hod's chimney. My grandfather, with Ben and Joe Cressy, went down to investigate. They found Hod dying, but before he lost consciousness, he said, I have no friends or relatives that care to know anything about me, so when I am gone, Lift up that hearthstone and you will find fifteen hundred dollars, and out there under that stone there are three thousand more. Grandfather and the Cressys thought it was just the rambling of a dying man, and paid no attention to his words. Some days after, to their profound surprise, they found the fifteen hundred dollars under the hearthstone. Then they began kicking each other because neither of them had the slightest idea where the stone was that covered the other three thousand. Ben Cressy, with the aid of the boys, turned every stone which might, in their estimation, cover the wealth. They never found it. And I redeem my pledge when I tell your readers that it is out there yet, out under the stone. Now, $3,000 isn't an, an enormous haul, right? Especially when you split it two ways. Right, but we have to keep in mind this is 1840 money, right? After 180 years of inflation, it's actually closer to $100,000. And that's not even taking into consideration the intrinsic value of an old gold or silver coin. Depending on its condition, it could be worth 10 times face value. And all of a sudden, a million dollar treasure seems like it might be worth a few days search. Oh yeah. This brings us to our plan. Unfortunately, out of all three newspaper articles, none give a great indication of actually where Perry's Tavern is. One mentions a turnpike between Brattleboro, Vermont, and Troy, New York. One lists Reedsboro. One lists Woodford. The Triangle book author believes it's in Glastonbury. Yeah, so for the first thing tomorrow morning, we have a Skype interview with the author of Eddie's Triangle book to see if he has any idea of where it might be. If not, we have two locations to check from the Leather Journal. We'll search each location for Perry's grave. If it's not there, we'll know that we're not in the right spot. And when we do locate it, our metal detectors will make short work of finding the treasure. Yeah, they will have the ability to actually search through stones without us needing to lift them and look underneath like everybody before us had to do. So find the grave, find the treasure. We hope you'll join us next week when we begin the search for the Grave of Gold. Pretty good. I think that we covered everything. We got all three newspaper articles planned for tomorrow. I think we nailed it. I hope so. <laughs> Man, how weird was that librarian today? I think we actually got kicked out of the library. Is that what happened? The whole interaction was just so, so weird. Did you get any more on film of the, that journal? Other than the first two pages? Brad? Earth to Brad. What? Did you get any more footage uh, after the first two pages of the journal? Uh, no, we only got the first page with the first two sites in it, but this footage that we're recording today looks amazing. It's like really, really good. That's good to hear. It only took about 20 times to film it. <laughs> I know, but I have a, a lot writing on this series. Like the weekly metal detecting videos have not been doing well. DeGrow did not do well. So this show, it needs to be perfect and it, it needs to go viral. Otherwise, 
I don't know, I'm gonna have to find something else to do, like, with my life. Base value, and all of a sudden, a million dollar treasure seems like it might be worth a few days search. It's a million dollars now? Really? Well, a million might be sensationalizing a little bit, but if we want this to go viral, which we do, I think we need to do that a little bit. A million dollars. Even a quarter of that would be so life-changing to me. I mean, I was even pushing to taking this week off of work. Look, I know that you've had an incredibly hard year financially, but I guarantee that we're going to find something at the end of this that's gonna be worth your while. Well, how can you guarantee that? Maybe guarantee is a strong word, but I have never been more confident about anything. It's totally different from DeGrow. And I know that we had discussed anything we found 50-50, but if you help me make a viral series, do another 20 takes if we need to, then if it's anything less than like an absurd amount of money, it's all yours, you can have it all. So I keep anything we dig up and we get you your viral series? That's the deal. Are we live? Live? Uh, lights look pretty good. Backdrop looks okay. Sound check. <laughs> um, we've got about five minutes before we sit down with this guy uh, for the Skype call. Got my questions over here. Did he give you his real name? No. Um, I didn't catch it either. But you know, I mean, you read the book. It's mm. very conspiratorial. And some people are just private people too. Right. Maybe he just, uh, yeah, maybe he's just cautious about giving out his identity. Uh, yeah. I get it. All right, so we got about one minute before we call him. Um, but after the interview, maybe half an hour to an hour, we'll go to the first location. We decided we're going to go to Fayville today. Fayville. Yeah. Okay. That makes the most sense. Um, it's the first thing in the journal. And it's not too far away from here, so we should be able to spend like the rest of the day there looking around, finding the treasure. All right, let's get this call going. Hello. Hello. Uh, you've got a bit of a filter there, a silhouette. Yes. I'd rather keep my identity secret when talking about the triangle. When you know the things that I know, I'd just rather people don't know who I am. Okay, cool. that's fine. Um, do you want to give us, you know, like a first name? Is this something we can use to address you? Seeker is fine. Seeker it is. Uh, so we're going to start these cameras now, and uh, we'll start the interview. Action. Well, hey, folks. Thank you for joining us for day two of our search for the Grave of Gold. We are joined this morning by the author of The Truth of the Triangle, the book that Eddie found in the library. Yeah, just yes I'm glad you found it. They won't take it as part of the collection. So every once in a while, I'll just go in and put one on the shelf. Sure. Every time they're missing. So I don't know if that they're throwing them away, but I, I hope that people are finding them and taking them home and learning the truth about what's going on up there in the mountains. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the librarian mentioned something about that. Yeah, he actually gave us the one that we have. Uh, he didn't seem to want it back. I'm glad that you guys have it, but I guess that means I'll have to go down and bring another one. Well, you know, we came across your book, and really the thing that stuck out to us the most was the chapter on Oliver Perry. 
Yeah, and thanks again for sending us the newspaper article. Yeah, seriously. Super helpful. We couldn't find that anywhere. In my research of the triangle, I cast a wide net for any disappearances, any kind of disappearances I can find. And I found those newspaper articles probably 10 years ago. And the thing that stuck out to me is that people were disappearing. Supposedly, Oliver was killing them, but the author was saying that he was a good man, so it only makes sense to me that those people were walking into the triangle, and Oliver was being made a scapegoat just for what people didn't understand. Yeah, totally. Uh, that, that could be the case. Uh, yeah, no, we read that in your book, um, but you know what we were really hoping to get to the bottom of is actually where the tavern is located. Have you happened to come across that in your research at all? What you should really be asking yourself is if you really want to step foot in there. I'm sure that you've read that the Native Americans totally avoided that area. They knew, but the colonists didn't, and the loggers during the Industrial Revolution didn't. Even now, people bury their heads in the sand. I've lost count of all the Appalachian Trail hikers that have gone missing, and nobody's talking about it. The only real news coverage was in the 40s and 50s, which I'm sure that you boys have read about online. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've done a lot of diving into those uh, in the past. Paula Weldon's a huge Vermont story, uh, the Jepson boy. Yeah, and he's actually really into the Bennington Triangle. And you know, if our audience is interested in learning any more about that, there's actually a whole Wikipedia page, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but we're, you know, we're only in Bennington for a week and you know, you being really the only person that we've come across that have even heard of Oliver Perry, we're really hoping to just to find the tavern. You know, even a town would be helpful if you happen to know. I have an idea of where it might be, but I wouldn't feel comfortable just telling you directions. Aside from the obvious dangers of the triangle and the disappearances and the Bennington monster and Sasquatch, the terrain and the hike is almost too much for any man to handle. No, we're ready to get after this. We're, we've done a lot of hiking in the past and we'll, we'll do what it takes to get to there. Yeah, and we actually have two locations to, to check. Uh, the first one is going to be later today. It's an old ghost town uh, called Fayville. Fayville? Well, that's just idiotic. I highly recommend you don't go anywhere near there. I assume you're aware of Henry McDowell? No, uh, sorry, that doesn't ring a bell. I haven't heard that one. Well, Henry McDowell worked in a mill up there in Fayville, and I, I think it was the 1890s. And Henry viciously murdered one of his co-workers. And he did it by smashing his head with a huge stone. Nobody could figure out why he did it. But later, after he was caught, he claimed he was hearing voices from the forest. He was obviously declared insane and sent up to the Vermont Asylum. But he escaped and he made his way back into the triangle where many believe he still roams. I actually managed to pull an old photo of him years ago. I'll send it to you guys. Now, if you're serious about going up there and you run into someone missing an eye, run. Okay, right. Well, thank you. Uh, we'll definitely keep an eye out for him. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we, uh, before we end the interview? If you boys are intent on making videos in that triangle, be prepared that people in power will take notice you know agencies with three letters they're definitely following me hence in my discretion here but they'll do everything they can to keep what's going on in the triangle quiet don't say i didn't warn you oh and i actually have a website where i talk about all of this stuff if you wanted to share that with your audience that would be fine all right, well, uh, Mr. Seeker, thank you again for your time this morning, and hope you'll have a great rest of your day. All I can say is be careful up there.
All right, well, I think that we asked all the questions we had prepared, not that it really mattered. The guy was clearly not all there. Do you really think so? Hey, I thought he had a lot of good points. Some of it seemed to be pretty on point with some of the literature, research, you know. Well, I mean, I'd heard about Paula Jepsen too, but I don't think that really helps us in any way to find the treasure. You don't think they're connected, maybe? All this phenomenon in one area? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's just coincidence he happened to stumble upon these uh, newspaper articles. and I mean, I'm grateful that he sent us the third article, but I just... I guess we'll see. <laughs> All right, well, let's get packed up and uh, head to Fayville. See if we can find the treasure there. Let's do it. Give me a water bottle while you're in there. Thanks. What are you gonna do with that? Find the treasure. Yeah, but you know we're in national forest. We can't metal detect in national forest without the treasure trove permit. And I'm pretty sure we talked about make sure the grave is here, make sure we're in the right spot, and then we'll go get the permit. I figured we'd you know swing around, at least make sure the treasure's here, and kind of then back up and get it. Uh, afterwards. Yeah, but, I mean, what are we going to say if we run into a ranger? The whole point of this is to film a show. We can't do something illegal and then post it on YouTube. <laughs> there's no treasure, there's no show! I mean, we might as well check right now and then just... I don't like it. Let's, let's see if Perry's grave is even here first. And if it is, then we'll talk about this again. I just, I don't like it. All right, whatever. Whatever. Thank you. Well, hey, folks. Oh, laps. Oh, good call. Am I on? I'm on. Library green light. And red, red light. light. Here we go. Well, hey folks, Brad and Eddie here. Out in the green mountains of Vermont, beginning our search for the grave of gold. Just yesterday, we found an old leather-bound journal at the local library containing numerous old unnamed and unknown tavern sites in Bennington County. Unfortunately, we weren't able to take that home and we only captured video footage of just the first page containing only two entries, but here we stand at one of those two entries. The site currently a ghost town of what used to be a prosperous logging operation called Fayville. Now Fayville has a ton of ghost stories and disappearances attributed with it. Like Henry McDowell. Where did you get that? It's the picture the seeker gave us. Yeah, I know. Where, how did you get it in your hand? There's a printer in the Airbnb. <laughs> did you laminate this? Yes. Why? <laughs> we... uh, did you hear what he said? Did you read about this guy? I, I did, unfortunately. Yeah, you don't think he's running around out here, do you? I hope not, <laughs> but I got a picture and know what he looks like. I don't think we need to talk about him again in the intro of the video. Let's just focus on the history of Fayville. I okay. Know. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's probably too much. Yeah, <laughs> probably too much. All right. I'm really excited to take a look around this old ghost town. It seems like there's foundations everywhere, but according to the old journal, the possible tavern site is about a mile downstream of here. We'll take a hike and see if Oliver Perry's grave is there. I'm feeling really good about it. Me too. Let's take a look around here. Well, we have somehow climbed down into the base of this absolutely massive stone foundation. It's probably the biggest foundation I've ever seen in my life. 
me too. Now, Fayville was an absolutely booming logging operation in the 1800s, but it was also a community. There was a storehouse, a schoolhouse, homes for the workers. This was likely one of the mills. But one day, they ended up cutting down all of the trees. There was no more money to be made here, and everybody just seemingly up and left. Before they seemingly up and left, there were some unsolved murders that were rather shrouded in mystery. That's true, that could have definitely also contributed to why everybody left. But there's also a very interesting historical fact about this place. Fayville was founded by a man named Benjamin Fay, who was grandson of the very famous Stephen Fay of Revolutionary War and Catamount Tavern fame. Catamount Tavern was really significant during the Revolutionary War as it was a secret meeting spot, the Green Mountain Boys. Yeah. The meeting that was held there led to the eventual victory at the Battle of Bennington and made the country what it is today. It only makes sense that Fayville would have a tavern of its own given the family history. Let's take a look around Fayville and then we'll take a hike down the river and look for Oliver Perry's Tavern. Some iron rings on the ground right here. It looks like they were all part of a big maybe a wooden pipe or something for moving water around. All of this would have been hydropowered to spin the saws. Some more iron fragments. This big foundation here. this no what what is that get the frick out no <laughs> no no there is no way are you recording right now i'm recording yeah is it is this real did i just hit my head did we find the treasure already what are you waiting for? Open it up. I'm just looking for booby traps first. <laughs> There's stuff in it. There's stuff in it? There's How do you know? There's stuff in it. I can feel it. Here, yeah, bring it up here. Here we go. Go. Let's see. <gasps> it's a geocache. It really is. Did you know this was here? I didn't know this was here. Look at it all. Oh my goodness! Is that like, it's like a clay cross. Is that a Bible? I bet it's a Bible. Is it a Bible? Yeah, I bet it's a it Bible. It is a Bible. There's like a rose, there's rosary beads in here. A bunch of spent 12 gauges. Man, I didn't bring my geocache stamp. Whoa. Well, come on, we gotta sign the log. <laughs> okay. Green Mountain does it again. <laughs> All right, well, that was fun. Cool old history, foundations, and a geocache. I know! By I accident. We didn't even have the app open. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start hiking um, about a mile downstream, according to the journal, to see if we can find this tavern site and look around, see if we can find Oliver Perry's grave. So we're still kind of making our way downstream, and I just spotted some animal tracks in the mud and it definitely looked like uh, it's from a horse with horseshoes. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt those are horseshoes. Uh, it's And it's kind of bizarre because there's no real roads here. So the person riding a horse must have just been kind of coming upstream and crossed here. Yeah, must have been a long ride. I never see horses, people riding horses in the woods. Never. Pretty never. bizarre. Well, pretty cool. Somebody's out here riding a horse. Yeah. Just like the olden days. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's keep going, see if we can find this tavern. All right, so we're going to move up. We'll take a B-roll of us walking along the stream right here. Sorry. Thought I heard, you didn't hear that? I didn't hear anything. I'm having a hard time hearing anything over the stream, to be honest. There's like some thudding over there, like steps or... You think it might be Henry McDowell? <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I heard something. And... I don't know, I didn't hear anything. It's creep the place is creeping me out a little. We're gonna set up the camera and we'll do a B-roll of us walking here. Alright. 
Well, we followed the GPS point described in the journal downstream and we found the foundation to what appears to be a home. Now, was it Oliver Perry's tavern? To be determined. We have to look around to see if we can find an open grave as described in those newspaper articles. But just at first glance, this place is awesome. There's a beautiful old oak tree right behind us here. There's an old craggly apple tree behind us over here. If I was a traveler, I'd want to stay here. Absolutely. All right, the grave is supposed to be on a small knoll. Let's look around to see if we can find any rises. Let's see if we can find this grave. Well, we've returned to the main foundation. You can see the big old oak behind us. We've been searching for about an hour all around this property, both sides of the river. And unfortunately, not only did we not find Oliver Perry's grave, but we didn't really find any knolls either. It's pretty flat down here. You know, it's still a really interesting site and I'm glad we came and got to search around here. And for sure, you know, plus one, we found a geocache. That's true. We it's don't find cool. geocaches by accident very often. I mean, we have, but yeah, it's, it's uh... <laughs> yeah. So we are going to cautiously say that this is most likely not Oliver Perry's tavern, but we have two locations that we were able to read from the journal. And tomorrow, first thing, we're going to be going to Somerset Ghost Town, also in Bennington County, for another possible location of Oliver Perry's tavern. I'm super excited about going there. It's gotta be it. And we hope that you join us next week as we continue our search for the grave of gold. See you then. See you then. Know what this is? I have no idea what that is. It's on the car. That was on my car? That was on the car. And i um, pretty positive this is a GPS tracker. I don't know anything about GPS trackers. Are you sure? Uh, I'm sure. You're sure you, you don't think I'm going out at night finding the treasure or something without you? That doesn't even make any sense. Did you just accuse me of putting a tracker on my own car? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Someone put... Someone put this here. Who, who would be following us? It doesn't make any sense. We didn't tell anybody we were doing this except, you know, our immediate family. What do, what do we do? I have no idea. I mean, I, I think the first step would be to pitch that into the woods. Oh yeah, yeah, and, um, let's get rid of it. You know, I guess we just have to watch our backs, make sure somebody's not following us. Yeah. I don't know why anybody would be. Yeah, let's get rid of this. All right. Man, we haven't even killed one battery yet. I hope that we're taking enough B-roll and footage in general. You know that Somerset's a national forest too, right? We can metal detectors. I know. I, I don't want to use the machines. I'm just, I, I'd rather keep them with us and not leave them alone in the Airbnb. It's just safer here. All right, I guess that's true. How did you sleep last night? Awful. I was up looking out the window all night thinking there's another tracker we missed. There's someone here, someone watching us, someone gonna sneak in here, I mean. Yeah, I honestly, I didn't sleep very well either. I'm just super paranoid that we're not gonna get this done. Like we only have three days left. Afraid I'm not taking enough B-roll. Afraid that this rain isn't gonna stop like it's supposed to today. I don't know, it, it just seems like it's not gonna happen for us. So how long to uh, Somerset? 
Uh, it's about a 40 minute drive to Somerset, the ghost town. Then according to the journal footage, which is blurry, it's hard to read it, but I think it says about a half mile hike to the supposed tavern. And honestly, I don't know what we're gonna do if it wasn't Perry's Tavern. We're kind of out of ideas. Yeah, we can try the library again, maybe pick Dewey's brain there. Yeah, if he lets us in. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that was really weird, that whole thing, so I don't know what else to do. <laughs> that geocache, that was awesome. I, I can't believe, what are the odds in our ventures? You know, you think it's like a one-time thing, you find one out in the woods, you don't know, right? And then it's like a second time. Yeah, I knew, I knew it was there. Are you kidding me? You knew it was there? Well, every episode we need to find something, make it exciting, you know? And I knew that if I just didn't tell you, your excitement would be more genuine. So I just kind of kept it to myself, kind of wandered off into the area where I knew where it was. And the footage is great. You're so excited. We're both Wait, excited. Couldn't we have just said, oh, this geocache that's at it is like a little bonus of thing, no, you the know? The excitement of finding it uh, uh, is what made the last video, I think, because we didn't really find anything else. So yeah, I was excited. I thought it was genuine. Well, I, I won't do it again. I promise. Uh, all right. Yeah, just, all right. Well, let's get started. We still got a 40 minute drive to Somerset and uh, see what we find there. All right. Here, why don't you come over here next to me? Get that in the background. But actually, <laughs> I think it's done raining. Let's let's get the raincoats off just for continuity's Holy sake. Holy smokes! We're not going to be wearing them the rest of the day. Let's just take them off and we'll start again. <laughs> let's do it one more time. Same thing. Okay. Hello and welcome. Today we find ourselves out here in the ghost town of Somerset. Somerset, Vermont was chartered in 1762 by just a few families, but being situated in prime timber territory in its proximity to the Deerfield River, it grew to over 300 by the year 1850, with the logs being their primary source of income. Behind us stands the last remaining structure, the original schoolhouse from the settlement. Yeah, there was no real town center in Somerset. There are just cellars all along this old dirt road, but this, is really interesting. Let's go take a look at it. It seems like we can actually almost go underneath it. I'm not I know, sure. I see that. Let's go take a look. Interesting. Light. You see any treasure down there? Not a very strong light. Yeah, let's go around the side here. Wish we could look inside. All I the know. windows are boarded up. That's probably where the treasure is. Yeah. Actually. Oh look. This what one. Do you think? Can we reach it? We? Oh, it's nailed. It's uh, screwed shut. That's too bad. Ooh, this one's out. Look. Got a little twist. Yeah. No, it's still, still closed. Oh well. By 1937, there's only two residents remaining in the town of Somerset and was disincorporated by the state of Vermont. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like a great tourist destination, a place where you would need a tavern. But in 1850, just five miles north of here, the politician Daniel Webster gave a speech pulling in 15,000 people. Some of them would certainly need a place to stay. And according to the journal that we found in the library, there is a tavern about a half mile hike from here. So we're gonna head off, see what we can find. Hopefully it's Perry's Tavern. There's a chance. I think it's out there. All right, we're getting close. We're going to uh, strap on our hiking boots, and go see if we can find this place. All right, so we're going to walk past the camera. It's gonna be a slow-mo, it's gonna be a sweet B-roll shot. We'll just walk right past. Again? Yeah, again. How much B-roll do you need? We did this like three times. 
I mean, don't, let's not forget why we're here. I mean, we got to film these kinds of shots. It's going to make the show awesome. I'm just a little worried about, you know, time and daylight. That was weird. Was that an elk? An elk? An elk. I mean, it can't be an elk. They were exterminated like 150 years ago here in Vermont. That was weird, though. It just sounded like an elk. Is that, is that a ranger? Get out of our way. Hello. Hi. Hey, did you hear that? Like an elk? An elk? Look, I'm in a bit of a rush. Do you guys know where you need to go? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Aren't you glad we don't have metal detectors with us, Eddie? <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, after a bit of a hike, we have arrived at an old stone foundation from a building, exactly where the journal said that there would be one. And we were hiking up this old road, and the more I look at it, it seems like it could be an old, well-traveled turnpike. It's fairly wide and deep. Seems like it had a lot of traffic back in its day. I concur. So, the only way we're going to know if this is Perry's tavern and then start our search for the treasure is if his grave is here somewhere. According to the old newspaper articles, it was up on a knoll and this area is very hilly, so we're going to have some searching to do. We're gonna split up, each take a camera, see if we can find this open grave because where we find the grave, we find the gold. That's the hope. Ready to get started? Let's do it. All right, I think that was pretty good. Yeah. That's good. Any geocaches or anything exciting coming up I should know about or? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I apologized. I'm apologizing again. I won't do that to you again, I promised. I don't know what's out here. Hopefully something. Yeah, me footage, too. But... Here, I'll give you this camera and we'll go split up and see what we can find. Okay. Wow. Look how dilapidated this, this wall is. It looks super, super old. Whoa, look at that. It's like a, I'm guessing there's a, there's a spring under there or something. Very whirly, magical looking. All right, that's even cooler. Look at that. You see it? Can you see it? What? You are not going to believe this. What? I was walking along this old stone wall and I saw something here that was kind of a weird color. Come here. Look, it's a what? bag, a old leather bag. And it sounds like there's something in it. What are you doing? Film this. We have to open this up, see what's inside. What? Really? Really what? This is the most incredible thing. A bag, leather bag full of what sounds like coins. We'll get the camera turned back on. We're gonna film us opening this. It feels a little familiar. Maybe from like yesterday. What, the geocache? Yeah. This is exactly why I didn't tell you about the geocache, because now we have to film ourselves finding this and being all excited about it. This is like an incredible moment for the show. I don't think it's real. Are you implying that I just pretended to find it just now? Yeah, a little bit. You're just walking along and found the find of the century out here? Eddie, I swear, I have no idea what this is. I swear. You really don't know what's in there? I don't. Can we please just get the cameras turned back on? and film us opening this. All right, all right, all right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's check it out. All right. Ready? I'm live, yeah. Am I have cameras on? You got a little red light on your screen? Yep. Okay, you ready? To open, open up, it up the mysterious leather bag found in a stone wall. Is it heavy? It's very heavy. Really? Ready? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. These are Morgan silver. Silver dollars. It looks like all of them are. Oh my gosh. 
This one looks perfect. 1890. This um. Wow. I got one. 1921. Wow, that's that's newer than I. Oh wait, that doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, that's way too new to be Hod's treasure. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, right? And isn't it supposed to be like three thousand dollars? Yeah, this is like thirteen or fourteen dollars. Yeah, <laughs> but. Morgan silver dollars in a leather bag in a stone wall. That's like, that that could be the finale to this show if we don't actually find Hod's treasure. It's cool. It's just I, I was expecting more. I was expecting that three thousand dollars worth, and it's not even that old. What, what that? is that? That's not a close. I'm getting a phone call here. Hello? It's Dewey from the library. Yeah, sure. We're maybe, I don't know, 40 minutes away? Sure. He wants to talk to us. Let's go to the library now, but let's get these cleaned up. We're gonna have to refilm us finding this anyways. I feel like we should have a little bit more excitement about this, right? Right. So we'll get these back in the bag and you can hang on to it. Treasure is yours, right? Yeah. That was the agreement. All right, let's get out of here. this all about a guy came in here last year offered me a few hundred dollars to get rid of any books or newspapers that had to do with Oliver Perry or his old tavern in the mountains he told me if anyone came in here looking for that tavern or the treasure to contact him at this number We're really looking for kind of any indication of the location of this tavern that's up in the mountains. There's supposed to be treasure buried in a grave. Regretfully, I messaged that number. I told them you were there looking for the tavern. And I gave them a description of your vehicle. Do you know who this, who they are? I don't honestly know anything about him. Uh, he was wearing a big red jacket. Uh, he had a ring on blue stone. I think it was a class ring. When you were here, you found that. I recognized it. It belonged to that man. This, this was his. He had it with him. I had a look through it when I got home. Uh, halfway through, the writing gets really strange. I don't know how it ended up here. Uh, I don't know why it looks so old. I don't know how old it is. I feel like giving this book to you guys is the right thing to do. Uh, if you run into him, uh, send him my way. I'll gladly give him back his money. All right. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Well, we figured out who put the tracker on the vehicle. So I wonder if he knows roughly where it is, he's protecting it, or what if he's looking for it too? Well, this is his journal. I mean, he has several possible tavern locations, so that does seem pretty likely. But Dewey was right. Halfway through this, it looks like it was written by a completely different person. It's like a cursive. I can barely read any of it. But it looks like there's only two more places to check if we just... When in order, you know, we only have two days left, it's kind of perfect. The next place is, it's called Mountain Mills, and it says it's underwater. So, that seems like a good next step. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I have that number Dewey gave us. I think it'd be a good idea, just call him up. I don't want him to have my phone number. 
Maybe we should just give it to the police. I don't want to get too hung up. I'd like to find the treasure first. We could hang on to it. Maybe we should just go to the police after we find the treasure. Maybe you're right. We'd probably spend a lot of time down at the station. We don't really have any time to waste. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to find the treasure. All right. Do you have that bag of coins? Yeah, I do. Why? <laughs> you hang on to it. Just don't go cashing it in because that's going to be the finale if we don't actually find Perry's Tavern and find the treasure. Okay. It, it's somewhere safe. Okay. First thing tomorrow morning, head to Mountain Mills. I think that's a good plan. And if that's not the spot, we've got one more place to check in the journal. Yeah. Just keep an eye out. Make sure yeah. this guy is uh, not following us. And Yeah. That's right. a good plan. Let's get out of here. rain last night it is freezing out now today it is um so we're gonna film this intro uh give a little bit of a history on mountain mills and then chris is going to be here any minute with the kayak and then we'll head off to the location described in the journal sounds good so how are we gonna address the us coming into possession of the journal let's just let's just say that we went back to the library to do more research or something and do we had a change of heart and gave it to us. Yeah. All right. Oh, actually, Chris Just is here right now. Dry. Oh, perfect. Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the drive all the way down here with the kayak. I, we hadn't planned do any kayaking but um i don't know what we would have done otherwise yeah uh, it's no problem at all it was a nice ride but i can't believe the leaves they're like gone and up there it's still green things work a little differently down here in the shrine <laughs> <laughs> so you guys really found the treasure huh well it's not the treasure we, we found something not the hobo's treasure something yeah it's not the three thousand dollars that's you know the stories three thousand you guys expect a hobo to be carrying $3,000 around? I mean, so, we, we haven't really thought about it that way, I guess, but according to the newspaper, it said that he hid, he actually hid $4,500. That's all the sources say. Yeah. I hope you guys uh, find what you're looking for. All right, buddy. Well, thank you for bringing the kayak. Thank you so much. Anytime. Yes. Give me a call. Whatever you guys need. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Brad and Eddie here, continuing our search for the Grave of Gold. Through a bizarre turn of events, we now possess the mysterious leather journal. It's essentially a list of taverns here in Southern Vermont, which is how we find ourselves here, standing at the edge of Harriman Reservoir in Wilmington, Vermont, in a place once called Mountain Mills. The site we're at today shares a similar history to Somerset, which is just up the Deerfield from here. Yeah, this small logging community had a school, a post office, even a hospital. But in the 1920s, the bustling town could not compete with the growing need of electricity. A hydroelectric dam was built, and this small town was drowned beneath the reservoir. Right here on the shore, you can see remnants of a building that once stood here. The rest, though, lies underwater. Now, unfortunately, we're not equipped to explore an underwater ghost town today. But according to the journal, the tavern site is actually a mile southwest of here. And the tavern itself, much like this foundation, is above the waterline. We can explore that on foot. Now, interestingly, right offshore is an island. Could it be the knoll on which Perry's grave sits? Well, we brought a kayak today to find out. Fortunately, there's only one kayak and two of us. Right, so we're going to have to rock, paper, scissors 
for who has to hike and who gets to row. You can have the kayak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Eddie's gonna take off down this trail. I'm gonna get the kayak in the water and we're gonna meet up at maybe Perry's Tavern. How was your walk over here, Eddie? It was okay. <laughs> How was your boat ride? It was great. It was beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear. Yeah. Hey, so I was thinking, walking over here, couldn't stop thinking about what Chris said. How did this hobo come into all this money? And I got thinking more about all the things being alleged. Yeah. What if Perry was? killing people out there, yeah. hiding it in this grave, and Hod, who lives right there on the property, just went, dug it up, and took it for himself. Hod was the one that dug up the grave. How else would he come into this money? That makes more sense than a bunch of Williams College students hiking in, I guess. Right? No, that makes the most sense to me. Perry really was a monster. He's killing people. And it's then stealing. Hod dug it up. That makes sense to me. I just, I can't stop thinking about it. It just makes the most sense. We'll have to work that in. Uh, yeah. Maybe at the finale. I'm not sure. We'll figure out how to work it in. Uh, let's film this intro part to say we're going to go do some searching and then spend the rest of the day searching, all right? Sounds good. All right, well, we have made it to the Potential Tavern Foundation. It's right behind the camera. We'll go look at that in a second. But we're not going to waste any time. I'm going to spend my time searching around here on land, and Eddie is going to take the kayak to the island maybe you can see behind us and search for Perry's grave there. Are you ready to do this? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, I think that was good. You ready to start looking? Yeah. Uh, just a heads up, I heard a crash when I was walking over here in the woods. Yeah, out in the woods? Yeah. Was it an elk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Did you see anything? I didn't see anything, no, but it was pretty loud. All right, well, let's just, let's get the radios out and turned on. And if I find anything or see anything here, I'll call you. If you find anything on the island, you call me. All right. Sounds good. All right, let's go. Here we are on the island. Some, some tough terrain coming up in here. Yep. It's docked up over here in the water. Yeah, jeez. Thick in here. All right, well, it appears Eddie has made it safely to the island. I just watched him disappear into the trees. Now, the old home foundation is right here next to me, but we're going to do some wandering around the property and see if we can find Oliver Perry's open grave. Crossing my fingers. Let's go take a look. The home foundation is right here next to me, but we're going to do some wandering around the property. Well, we have not found the grave yet. 
despite quite a bit of wandering. Uh, but I did just stumble upon another one of these piles of stacked stones. We have been seeing these all over the place this week. And this one, judging by the moss, looks pretty old. walking through the woods and there's this grim reaper scythe just sitting up against the tree. That's pretty cool. There's a scythe blade. Uh, no, it's the entire thing, handle and all in one piece, just up against the tree. That's pretty weird. Did you find the hole or the, the grave or anything? No, no, I'm uh, still looking around though. All right, well, why don't you uh, hurry up and get back over here. I'm starting to hear some crashing in the woods around me. Yep, will do. So, I definitely heard something that sounded like footsteps. I, I'm confident it was a person. I saw something moving around out there. Serious? Yeah. That's it. I've just, I've had enough of this. I'm, I'm just calling the number. We hear your phone. You can just come out. Isn't that the ranger from yesterday? We needed to talk. Last year, a man named Dan Thompson came into the station for a treasure permit. A few days later, he came back to the station and he said he found some of the treasure, but he thinks that there's way more of it still out there. He handed me a lot of money, and said if I protect that spot, that he'll double the amount of money that he passed to me. Was he wearing a red coat and a glass ring? Yeah, it sounds like him. Strangely, after that day, I never saw or heard from him until three days ago, I got a strange text message from a new number. Oh wait, so you're the one that's been following us all week. Did you put the tracker on our car? Yeah, well, that's not all. I noticed that you guys were visiting the same old taverns as Dan, so I knew eventually you guys were going to find the same place he was looking. So I planted these silver coins that were my grandfather's to mislead you guys. What? That was you? You, you put the coins out? I had hoped that this would make you guys stop looking, but it didn't. I tried calling Dan, but his number was out of service, so I'm done. If you guys can just give me the coins back, I'll give you the exact location Dan was looking into. I think we should do it. We can actually film the finale at Perry's grave like we had hoped. What about the deal? I thought, you know, get the coins, footage. And... But she said that this guy f actually found part of the treasure, but just part of it. There could be thousands of dollars still there. Thousands, you think? I don't know. Could be. I guess so. Yeah. Alright, let's do it. Alright. Man, this location doesn't make any sense. It's in the middle of absolutely nowhere. You think she's trying to lead us astray? Just made up a place? I don't know. She knew too much about the treasure and the legend itself just to be making it up. Why don't we do this? Why don't we pack up bare essentials? Go out, do a little recon, no stops for B-roll or anything else, yeah. and just go check it out so we don't have to waste our last day tomorrow looking. That's actually a really good idea. Let's, let's get going soon, though. It's going to get dark in probably an hour. Yeah. All right, let's go. I'm just gonna film this just in case. If this actually is the right spot, I don't wanna miss the moment we find 
Harry's grave. I won't stop for any B-roll or anything. All right, if we're quick. Man, we are really far out here. GPS point should be right up here. We are very, very close, but I am not sure which side of the road it's gonna be on. I think we should flick on our radios and you cover one side of the road, I'll hit the other. Got it. Cover more ground. You go that way, I'll go this way. Sounds good. Oh my God. I think that this is foundation up here. Oh yes, totally. Eddie, I found the foundation. Um, I'm gonna text you the GPS point. Actually, I don't have cell service. It's just a little bit west of the point that the ranger gave us. I'm gonna uh, go start looking for the grave. Let me know where you are. Well, there aren't very many hills around here. It's pretty flat, but there is a hill right up here. Eddie isn't responding on the radio. I don't know, maybe he didn't turn it on. Eddie! I don't know, let's go check out this hill. Oh my God, I think this is it. They said it was like eight, 10 foot across. I think this is it. Eddie! Eddie, I think I got it! Hey buddy, your family thinks I'm nuts coming here to talk to you, but uh, you're not at your memorial either. And somehow Perry's Tavern seems more appropriate. Sorry I haven't been able to make it up here in a while. I was hiking in every weekend to help look for you even after the search parties gave up, uh, but it's been hard to get out during the holidays. You know, you caused quite the commotion down in town. Since this is federal land, the FBI got involved. They questioned me, your family, Dewey, the Ranger. Apparently this Dan Thompson guy has been missing for over two years. They found his tent and four-wheeler a ways off in the woods. I guess he was camping out here while he searched for the treasure. By the sounds of it, I guess he found some of it. The uh, seeker of truth has been having a field day with this whole thing on his YouTube channel. Even made a video about you. I stopped making videos altogether. You know, I sold all my camera gear, most of my metal detectors, to help fund a few more private search parties. I can't help but feel totally responsible for all of this. You know, my obsession to film everything, the show, YouTube, stupid. And the 
This will probably be the last time I come here for a while. Snow on the forecast. You know, I was thinking, after all of the searching that's been done, nobody thought to use a metal detector, which seems so obvious. So I'm going to spend the rest of the day doing that. And I know it's national forest, but the consequences will be worth it if you dropped a few clues. Hey Brad, phone's dead. You give me a couple shouts to get me back on the road. Brad, you copy, hello? Hello, radio check. Brad! 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 My name is Brad Martin. I am recording this on my phone for law enforcement and future reference. I've just recorded my GPS location because I believe I have just found something related to the disappearance of Eddie Pascucci. I started metal detecting where he and I split up the day he disappeared. I walked about a half mile and I believe that this is his knife. I'm almost positive that this is the knife that he carries. All right, it has been about 25 minutes since I found that knife. I have been searching in large circles, spiraling out from that point, and I believe I have just found something else that might be his. This is the remains of a mylar blanket, at the base of this big tree, uh, an emergency blanket. I know for a fact he carries these in his backpack. I've recorded my GPS location. I'm gonna keep searching.
I'm getting further and further away from where I found that blanket. I just came across this stream. And I figure if he was out all night, he probably would have been out of water. So I've been searching the shores. I just found this. It's a belt buckle, stainless steel. Now I can't say for sure if it's his, but I believe that it is. So I'm going to draw a line from where I found the blanket the belt buckle and search in that direction. All right, I just found something that I'm positive is his and doesn't seem good. These are 100% his glasses. I, I can't imagine how or why he would leave these behind. I mean, he can't see at all without them. Right over there, I didn't record this on the log because it could have belonged to anybody, but found this too. This is a 45 ACP. That's what Eddie carries. I keep searching.
Hey there. Sorry to intrude. I, I saw the smoke from your chimney. I, I've been out in the woods all night, lost in the snow. You must be desperate to come through my door. Or you haven't heard the rumors. Uh, no, sorry, I haven't heard any rumors. I, I've actually gotten myself turned around in the woods last night. And... Do you have money? Maybe, maybe a little. Anybody see you on my land? I don't think so. Good. You should take a seat. Let's get warm. I'll get some cider. Sorry about the mess. Haven't had a patron here in a long time. So, Perry Place. As in, like, Oliver Perry? Oh, so you have heard of me. Don't let your cider get cold. You know, uh, the second thought, I should probably just get going. Um, I can get you some money for the drink. Oh, I know what this is. Treasure hunter. I think you're the first to come for my ill-gotten spoils. No, it's nothing like that. I just... I was just lost. I, I think I'm gonna go. Get it. I can't let you do that. Months ago, Another man arrived, asking questions. Another treasure hunter, wearing a red jacket. He went by the name Daniel. He stumbled in, lost like you, but he was very familiar with the tavern and the rumor of its buried blood money. And he was intent on claiming it. Unfortunately for Daniel, those rumors are true. It's not me doing the killing or stealing. It's him. Whatever you heard about me, that man swinging that ax is worse. I can't force you to stay in this room, but you'll want to wait until that chopping stops and he goes back to his cabin. So the man outside, it's Henry McDowell? Henry McDowell, Harold Trelawney. He goes by a bunch of different names. He mumbles to himself, but he only answers the Hod. So this is Hod? When I was a younger man, he arrived here, just like you and Daniel. Biggest regret of my life, allowing him to build that cabin. Once the killing started, I took down my sign but people kept wandering in. He must have gotten here the same way I did. And Dan, where's Dan? I warned him about Hod, same as everyone, but he was obsessed with finding whatever is buried out there. We agreed he could stay one night. He paid with this. And while I slept, it took me weeks to fill in the holes that he dug that night. Even desecrated my resting place over in the family plot. So Dan dug up your grave. That was the last I saw of him. Bahad now wears his red coat. Scribbles in his journal. Things have been added to the pile. Sounds like he's back in his cabin. Now you have a choice to make. 
Head back the way you came. The most wayward of travelers head over by the stone piles near the brook. Or stay and search for your treasure like Daniel did. this past month so I feel fine good good yeah the uh, the hospital had mentioned that you might have taken a pretty big fall out there and you might have hit your head I didn't hit my head that didn't happen okay sure good so you see my grave yeah I spoke at the ceremony that's right I forgot kind of funny really I always thought it was weird Perry had a grave before he died now I have a grave before I die you think there's any treasure in yours I don't know you were there not me <laughs> oh hey I um, brought this I found it the same day I found you I thought maybe you'd want it back oh yeah I was looking for this. Yeah. Thank you. You know, when I first pulled you off that mountain, you're telling some pretty wild stories. You said you had drinks with Perry and chased by Henry McDowell. Yeah. I I stopped talking about it actually. The police, reporters, all my family, none of them believed any of it. Doctors said it was delirium caused by either exposure to the elements, starvation, all that stuff. That it wasn't real. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that's what makes the most sense, doesn't it? I mean, if you got lost, maybe you found a cave or something to hole up in while you're out there. Like, didn't have any bullets left, so you must have done some hunting to feed yourself. I mean, maybe you did hit your head and then 
just can't remember what actually happened. We did so much research on Perry before you went out there, it would make sense that if you were to fabricate something, it would include all of that. You know, but sooner or later, you're gonna have to kind of figure out what happened because people need answers. They need to know where you were this whole time. Like your family and the media, me. What is this? The next one. Before you go, many years ago before Hot arrived, another traveler came over the brook. He said he was coming from St. Albans, headed south. He left in a hurry that night, but under his pillow, he had left this. Seems like something you could use.